Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about converting vertex to standard form. So going from vertex form to standard form. Um, so if you're not sure, and, we're, and specifically we're talking about quadratics. Um, so if you want a little more information about vertex form and standard form, you're going to want to check out my video on um, you know, introducing vertex form, so you want to check that out first. But this video, we're just going to be specifically converting vertex to standard. Um, so I've given you three examples. These are all in vertex form, okay? They are all quadratics, so to the power of two. And I'm going to show you how to rearrange this into our standard form. And just as a little reminder, standard form is our y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? The first thing we would want to do is recognize that this is a binomial squared, okay? Um, so we cannot, a lot of students want to try to um, distribute that power of two and they think, oh, power to power exponent laws means that we multiply the powers. That doesn't work here because this is a binomial. That would only work for monomials, okay? Um, but since this is a binomial, I cannot distribute that, that um, power of two. But what I can do and what this does mean is that I rewrite it twice. So I put x plus one times x plus one. That's what this means. It's x plus 1 squared written twice. And then we have our minus 4 hanging out at the end. So at this point, I've got a binomial times a binomial. And hopefully you're thinking, oh, we FOIL those because we do. Okay, so we're going to FOIL these um, together. And it's important we keep this negative 4 out here, this minus 4 separate. Okay, so he's just going to kind of tag along as we go, but we're not going to use him until the very end. That'll be the last thing that we do. So let's worry about foiling this first. So I've got my, remember foil, the F means first. So this is, let's go ahead and rewrite it, x times x, which is x squared. I'm using parentheses so that we can really see it'll be separate from this negative four. Um, and then uh, x times x is x squared. So our outer x, oh, went to the wrong place. Sorry, right here, if that doesn't confuse anyone. x times one, that'll be our outer, which will just be one x, positive one x or just x. Now we'll do our inner, right, right here. 1 times x is positive 1x, or just x. And now our last, 1 times 1 is just 1. Okay, so now I have to understand that technically out here in front of these parentheses is a positive 1. There's nothing there, so that means there's an understood positive 1. So when there's a positive 1 here, I technically need to distribute that positive 1 throughout the whole parenthesis set. Now, because it's a positive 1, we know it's not going to change anything, right? 1 times anything is just exactly what you start with. But I want to show you this step because that number is not always going to be 1, okay? Um, so in theory here, we are distributing the 1. 1 times anything, as we know, just itself. Right, so the, I would just be left with x squared plus, and I can go ahead and combine these like terms um, just while I'm rewriting this. We know that x plus x is 2x, right? 1 plus 1 is 2, so it's plus 2x. And then positive 1 times positive 1 is just positive 1. And then I have my minus 4. So I finally, by distributing that 1, the whole point of doing that was to get rid of the parentheses. So now notice my parentheses are gone. And now, as my final step, I can combine this negative 4 with this positive 1. Okay? So we have y equals, I got my x squared, right? 2x plus 2x. And then 1 minus 4, those are my like terms. Just like these are my like terms here, to combine that 2x, these are my like terms here. So 1 minus 4 would be negative 3, right? 
and I would check to make sure are there any other like terms I can combine? No. And then double check to make sure am I in standard form? And as long as you've done this correctly, you should end up in standard form, but it's always good to double check, right? Um, and so I am in that AX squared plus BX plus C form. Now, what's cool about um, going from vertex form to standard form. So we've converted vertex to standard. Um, and what's cool about this is there's, as long as you have a graphing calculator available to you, you can really easily check. Okay, so you wanna bring your graphing calculator out and we wanna to go to the y equals. And the first equation we're gonna type in is the original that they gave me in vertex form. So notice it's y equals, y equals, parenthesis x plus one squared, and then we have our minus four, right? And then in my second line, I'm gonna type in x squared plus two x minus three, okay? Now I wanna graph these. And if these are truly the same line, if I've done my work correctly, it should graph the exact same line. So you might say, well, it only did it once. Well, it's actually graphed the two lines exactly overlaying each other. So the fact that I don't see anything else and I could zoom out just to make sure I could hit zoom um, three, just to make sure there's nothing further out there. But as you can see, it'll just be that one line, um, that one parabola. So I know I've done this correctly. That's a great way to see if maybe you've made a mistake along the way, um, is if you get two separate lines there, then you know two separate parabolas there, then you know you've, you've done something wrong. So great little check you can use. Let's try another example. So for this one, we have f of x equals, remember that's just the same thing as y equals, okay? I've, I'd like to change it up so that you'll um, get used to seeing that f of x. So three times x plus two squared plus five. So the real difference between this problem and this problem, besides the numbers being different, is the a value out front. So here it was just a one, we didn't see anything, but here we have an a value of three. Okay, so that's gonna just add on to our steps a little bit, just that when we distributed that one here, now we're gonna be distributing a three when we get to that point, but it works very much the same. So we wanna bring down our f of x or our y equals, and the three, I'm just gonna leave out front for now. I'm not ready for him yet, but I do want to go ahead and recognize that x plus two squared is x plus two written twice, right? x plus two times x plus two. And then I have that plus five hanging out. The three and the plus five are just gonna kinda hang out until we're ready for them. The first thing I wanna take care of is foiling. Okay, so I've got a binomial times the binomial in the middle here. I wanna go ahead and foil them. So remember foiling is, and I'll go ahead and we'll start writing as we go. Foiling is first, right? So I'm gonna use parentheses to show this is separate until we're ready to take the parentheses away. X times X is X squared. Now our outer X times two is plus two X. Again, two times X is plus two X. And then our last two times two is plus four, right? And then we have this plus five hanging out. Now, of course, I do want to go ahead and combine those like terms in the center there. Um, and I can, I can go ahead and do that. Sure. Let's rewrite combining those like terms. So I've got three times x squared. Now 2x plus 2x, that's going to be 4x, right? Plus 4. And then I have this little plus five hanging out on the outside. So probably the biggest student error that I see happens right here. Um, students get this far, usually, and then they want to say, okay, 4 plus 5 is 9. 
but that's not what we actually do first. Remember our PEMDAS rules, that if we've got something to multiply, so here we've got this three outside the parentheses, we have to distribute that three into the parentheses to make the parentheses go away. I can't just make the parentheses disappear and do four plus five is nine. That's gonna completely change my answer. So remember that plus five or minus five, whatever it is at the tail end, you do that last, okay? We gotta distribute first. That's why I really wanted to show that one over here, distributing in, because we have to do that first, officially. So let's go ahead, let's distribute that three in. So I've got f of x equals three times x squared is three x squared. Three times four x is plus 12 x. And then three times four is plus 12, right? And now the parentheses have finally gone away, right? Because I distributed the three. So I can take that final step in combining these like terms. Finally, I can add that five in. And that'll give me my final answer. So let's see. F of x equals three x squared plus 12 x. 12 plus five, that's gonna give me positive 17. So you could see I went from vertex form to standard form. All right, um, of course I would always want to double check and say, am I in standard form x squared x and c? Yes. And do, are there any other like terms to combine? No. Okay, so I know I'm done. So let's look at one more example. So y equals negative 0.5 times x plus 8 squared plus one. So don't be scared because there's a decimal here. Sometimes they'll give you a fraction. Don't let that scare you, okay? We solve it the exact same way we just did those two, all right? First thing we'd want to recognize is we've got this x plus eight squared. So we want to actually write it out twice. So y equals negative 0.5 or 0 0.5, same thing. And then we'll write this out, x plus eight times x plus eight. And we have our plus one tagging along. Remember the point, negative point 0.5 and the plus one are just gonna kind of tag along until we're ready for them. So y equals, let's go ahead and FOIL this binomial times a binomial. So we've got negative point 0.5 times, all right, x times x, that's our first, is x squared. x times eight is positive eight x, that's our outer. Now our inner, x times eight is plus eight x, and eight times eight is positive 64. Um, okay, and then we have our in parentheses plus one. So my next step, I don't wanna just add 64 plus one. I'm not ready for that yet. I've gotta, we got this parenthesis wall there that I've gotta get rid of. I need to distribute this negative 0.5 in first, okay? So we're gonna distribute that to each part. So now we've got y equals negative 0.5 times x squared. Well, that's just gonna be negative 0.5x squared, right? Negative 0.5 times 8x. Well, that would be um, negative Point, negative four, sorry, <laughs> negative four x. And then if we went again, negative 0.5 times eight x, we'd get negative four x. And then negative 0.5 times 64, that's gonna give me negative 32 plus one. Now you may notice that I didn't combine my like terms there um, like I did here, and that's okay. It doesn't matter. I created a little bit more work for myself by having to multiply twice instead of once. It's okay, all right? So if you forget to combine your like terms before you start multiplying like I just did, that's okay. You will just combine them at the end. So don't, don't freak out. So we've got negative 0.5x squared right? And negative 4x minus 4x, those are our like terms, we're going to go ahead and combine them now, that gives us negative 8x. 
and then we will bring down, so now I could combine these like terms, plus 32, or excuse me, negative 32 plus one, which gives me negative 31. Okay, so there we went from vertex form to standard form. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. So I've given you a quadratic um, in vertex form, fx equals two times x minus five squared minus one. Um, so I want you to go ahead and try writing that in standard form using those same steps we just used on the last three equations. Um, I will write the answer in the uh, video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.